Hi, hi, hi. This is the second video in a series I'm doing on attachment styles. Today we're going to talk about the four causes of anxious attachment. So as you are hopping on or as you are catching the replay, you could do hashtag anxious so that I can say hi to you and I know that you are here. So we are gonna jump right into this video. So I wanna talk about the causes of anxious attachment in this video. In later videos, we'll be talking about like how that looks like as an adult when you're dating and we'll talking about like solutions for that and all of those things. So today we're gonna to go into the causes so you can just understand a little bit of the background of like what's going on and maybe you'll be able to recognize yourself or other people that you know in this. So anxious attachment, as with any style, has its roots in childhood. So the first reason for why someone might be anxious attachment is that their primary caregiver was available and then unavailable inconsistently. So they did not know when that person was going to be present for them and available for them and when they would not be available, when they would not be present for that child. So as a child, this is really confusing because the way that we're understanding the world, the way that we're understanding and connecting with things is through that primary caregiver. And the way that we're internalizing our own worth comes from how other people are interacting with us. And so this child, not knowing whether or not that person that they depend on for their sense of security and safety in this world was going to be there, created a lot of anxiety, right? They didn't know whether their needs were ever going to be met. They had no predictability. And so this on and off inconsistency creates this anxiety inside because it's so unpredictable. So as children, we are trying to understand why things happen in the world, right? So when this happens, we're trying to make sense of why that might be. And as children, we don't have the advanced adult reasoning systems that you know, adults do. So as children, we're trying to understand and typically what happens is that this gets internalized as my fault. Like there's something about me. There's some negative interpretation that's going to be developed about themselves. So typically that will be something like, I'm not lovable. Or if I'm really good, if I were good enough, I would be getting this attention so I must not be good enough. Right, And so this is why with anxious attachment, the key features of that, one of the key features is being pretty insecure and having lower self-esteem because this is how it's, it's coming from this childhood interpretation. Right. So the second reason for anxious attachment is that when the caregiver who is inconsistently available is available, they're not actually able to meet that child needs. They are kind of misattuned to what the child needs so that they're giving the attention, but it's not what the child actually wants. It's not what they actually need. And so even when they're available, there's still unmet needs. And so this actually leads into reason three, which is that there's a lot of unmet needs in the anxious attachment style that followed this person into adulthood. And by the way, in all of the attachment styles, there are unmet needs, but this is the way that it's presenting in the child is that so many needs because of that inconsistent availability. We are really only as needy as the unmet needs that we have, right? That's like logical, yes, of course. And so this explains why anxious attachment can be so needy and so anxious about getting their needs met. So as children, the children learn that there are some ways that I do get noticed, that I do get attention, right? And so this is where we develop those protests or those bids for connection that then will follow us into adulthood when we're trying to get attention from someone that we would like their love or their attention, right? And typically it's like, I'll just do whatever works to get attention and often these are not great strategies in adulthood, right? So this can look like I'm just gonna call and call and call or text and text and text till that person picks up the phone, right? Um, that could look like getting really, really angry to get attention. Really just anything that's going to call that back because the fear is it won't come, right? So as an adult, and this is the fourth reason, as an adult, you may have also, they may have also had a series of broken relationships or experiences of betrayal. And this will exacerbate whatever anxiousness was already there in the anxious attachment and create it as stronger, showing up as stronger. Because when we've gone through several experiences of heartbreak, several experiences of not 
having it love work out, having someone hurt us, some, having someone disappoint us, then this will lead to increased levels of anxiety, right? And also an increased drive to try to get those needs met that we're still carrying around all of these unmet needs. And so this will diminish confidence in relationships. And it might leave with the belief that I'm not sure somebody's going to stay. I'm not sure if they're going to be there. I'm not sure if they're going to meet my needs. And so this can also be part of where we're starting to see real extreme examples of more and more anxious attachment and all of those symptoms. So the key for anxious attachment is that it is defined by an inner anxiety about maintaining and not losing connection. And it's driven by this deep, deep need to be loved, right? And this is coupled with learned behavior to cling and to demand attention and to get that need met because otherwise I don't think that that will happen. And I have so much need that I need somebody to meet for me. So someone with anxious attachment, their deepest craving is for love. But the truth is that it is never going to be enough coming from another person because that need comes from somewhere really deep within, from the core wounds, from the sets of beliefs that we carry, from the nervous system stuff that we're carrying. And that actually has to just be healed within yourself, within the person. There is no one else outside of us ultimately that are going to be able to fill that need. And this is why sometimes people will say of of an anxious attachment, like you might have heard, like, you, I can't meet your needs. Like, you're it's just bottomless. There's no way I can ever do that, especially you might hear that from someone who's avoidant. And so the key here is really to do the inner healing work. And this is something that absolutely can be done. It's something that I coach my clients on how to do, the ones who come to me with anxious attachment, in my one-on-one coaching program helping them do exactly that. And there's a lot more to the stuff that we're doing because we're working on other things as well, but really, really a key piece of what needs to be worked through is the attachment piece. So you can send me a message about that. We can set up a consult to work together. In this series that I'm starting right now, I will be talking about all the different attachment styles over the next couple weeks and breaking down the different aspects of them. So this is the first video for anxious attachment. I will be doing another one on just like, what are the patterns? What does that look like? How does that experience? So not just the cause. And then also talking about things that you can do to start to change that within yourself and how to handle that with dating. So there is also a video up already that's about fearful avoidant, the causes of fearful avoidant attachment. So you can go find that and watch that as well. And I will see you soon. If you have any questions, you can pop them here and I will answer them. And I will see you soon. Bye.